So the other day, I made a video about Billie Eilish and her fans, and I was talking about depression and thinking that maybe Billie Eilish isn't such a good influence, but now I'm thinking, maybe she's not so bad. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is for anybody who wants to improve their mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And after I did um, one of my first Billie Eilish videos, I had a bunch of people like, yo Chris, what are your thoughts on the song Zanny, right? And I think a lot of people asked me to, you know, comment on this song because I am a recovering drug addict. My drug of choice was prescription medications. Um, my specific drug of choice was actually opioids though, which were painkillers. And Xanax, AKA Zanny, that is, you know, a benzodiazepine. That wasn't really my thing. I messed around with them a little bit. Wasn't a huge fan, just kind of numb you out, zombie you out, and that just, was not my thing. And um, I am on an antidepressant, anti-anxiety medication, which is called Lexapro, which is a non-narcotic medication. And just Zanny in, uh, in in particular, like it it is trying to calm down anxiety faster, but the problem is, is that it can be addictive. And a lot of people who become addicted to it also mix it with other things like alcohol, which increases the risk of um, an overdose. And the other issue is, is that some people who are buying Zannies on the street, they're being mixed with fentanyl, and fentanyl is an extremely, extremely powerful opioid, which is much stronger than heroin, and that's what um, I believe Lil Peep passed away from. All right, but anyways, I wanna talk about this song, Zanny. I'm gonna go over the lyrics first, and then I wanna talk about how maybe Billie Eilish isn't so bad of a role model, all right? So this first part says, what is it about them? I must be missing something. They just keep doing nothing. Too intoxicated to be scared. Better off without them. They're nothing but unstable. Bring ashtrays to the table, and that's about the only thing they share. All right? So, like, when it's talking about, like, I must be missing something, like, I see that as, like, this whole song kind of seems like Billy has friends who abuse Zannies, right? And she's sitting there like, what the heck are you guys doing, right? And, and when she says, too intoxicated to be scared. This is something very common with people who are abusing substances. Like, one of the issues with substance abuse um, is that you lack prefrontal cortex function, and part of the prefrontal cortex's, uh, cortex's job is to give you fear modulation. It's supposed to let you know what you should be afraid of. This is one of the reasons why so many people overdose on uh, Xanax, is because they'll be taking Xanax, and technically you can't overdose on Xanax, but you mix some booze with it, you can die from it, right? It depresses your nervous system. So like what can happen is, is that you, you get so messed up that you don't even care. Like the logical brain knows, don't take Xanax and drink. Logically, you know not to do that, but once you start getting high, that doesn't make sense. So I imagine Billy sitting there looking at her friends and, and just being like, what are you guys doing? But they're too messed up to even care, all right? So it says, I'm in their secondhand smoke, still just drinking canned Coke. I don't need a Zanny to feel better. On designated drives home, only one who's not stoned. Don't give me a Zanny now or ever. So I don't know if like Billy's had friends who have passed away from uh, Xanax or if she knows people who are addicted to Xanax, but like, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I'm like, man, maybe Billy ain't so bad. Hopefully this is like a personal story um, because people refer to her as like an industry plant. Um, and I know that her brother, I think it is, helps write songs, so I don't know if this is her own personal story. Either way, I think it's very beneficial that she's singing about this. But when she's talking about like, I don't need a Zanny to feel better, this is one of the reasons um, substance abuse is such uh, a major issue is so many people just aren't content with feeling the way that they're feeling. They just wanna change the way they're feeling. I remember when I was in my active addiction and I would just try anything. And like when people were like, Chris, I think you have a problem. Like I would be like, listen, I will take anything that alters my current state of being. Like I just, I never felt comfortable in my own skin. So I would drink or snort or swallow like anything, right? And it's cool that Billy's talking about, I don't need a Zanny 
to be better. And she talks about being uh, the designator driver and the only one who's not stoned, right? And by the way, by the way, I know a lot of people like in sobriety who like, you know, they, they worry about going out. Like for example, I live in Las Vegas, I go to concerts and shows and things like that. And like, if I, well, early on in my recovery, like when people are like, why aren't you drinking? Why don't you, you know, have a drink? How to, and I just be like, no, 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 no. I'm designated driver, right? So any of you who are newly sober, use that hack. If anybody asks you if you want to drink, just say, no thanks, I'm designated driver. Cause you gotta be a real punk sucker to try to get somebody to drink when they're trying to do the responsible thing and be designated driver, all right? And then she says, don't give me a Zanny now or ever. Like, she doesn't want it. So any kids watching this, be like Billy and remember, just say no, all right? So the next um, set of lyrics says, waking up at sundown, they're late to every party, nobody's ever sorry. This, man, uh, I knew a lot of people who were addicted to Xanax and the next line actually says, too, inebri too inebriated now to dance. Like, so many people addicted to Xanax, like it is just this ultimate downer. Like I said, this is one of the reasons why I never really messed with it, because I just didn't want to like move, like at all. I just felt completely numbed out like a zombie. And when you have friends who are addicted to this stuff or constantly abusing these medications, like she's talking about how they're waking up at sundown and they're late to every single party. Like I remember, I remember having friends who were addicted to Xanax and just constantly flaking, constantly flaking. And like, you take it all personally, right? I'm like, dude, where were you, right? Like, I remember like one specific story comes to mind. I was supposed to meet a friend, right? And, or he was supposed to come over, something like that. And like, it was three hours later until I heard from him. I'm like, dude, what? Like, what the heck is going on? And he's like, oh, you know, I got I got high and I just, I passed out, right? So Billy's talking about how, you know, her friends who are using Xannies, they're late to every every party and nobody's ever sorry, right? Because people, people who are addicted to substances, they often don't take any personal uh, accountability or responsibility, maybe early on or maybe on a lucky day. Like, I remember like in my addiction, like I used to get mad at you if you got mad at me for being late. Right? Like if I was busy getting messed up or I had to swing by the dealer's house and I was late to this or this or this or whatever, like it wasn't my fault, you shouldn't be so upset, right? Like addiction is this very selfish and self-centered disease. So it says, morning as they come down, their pretty heads are hurting, they're awfully bad at learning, make the same mistakes, blame circumstance. And this, man, this is a good song. Like. The lyrics of the song are good. I personally am not a fan of the song. Like I need something a little bit more upbeat and energetic. But like she's talking about that come down, right? Like the come down from Xanax is is brutal. And detox from Xanax is absolutely terrible. So detox from Xanax gives you a lot of psychological symptoms as well as physical symptoms. Like I've seen some people from the treatment center I was working at and we did detox and inpatient and PHP and outpatient. But anyways, like I've seen people who had been clean off Xanax for, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks and have a seizure. Like I remember one kid just straight up in my group, just sitting there and then just boom, just started having a seizure. Like Xanax messes you up. And when she's talking about their pretty heads hurting, they're awful bad at learning and they make the same mistakes. So, when it comes to addiction, a lot of people, a lot of people aren't even using anymore to get high. They're just using to get well, right? But when she talks about how they blame circumstance and they're not learning, like for example, for example, maybe somebody is, this is just one trigger. Maybe somebody's stressed about money, right? So they use Xanax in order to calm down. This is why Xanax can become very addictive because stress, you take a Xanax, right? But let's say you're stressed about money, you take a Xanax, right? Then you run out of Xanax. Now you gotta go buy more Xanax or you gotta find a doctor who will prescribe you more because most people, most people addicted to Xanax are abusing them and using way too much so they got a doctor shop and all these other things, right? But then you run out of money so now you're causing even more stress because you don't have money in, and you need Xanax, right? But when she talks about blaming circumstances, like I remember in my active addiction, like I used to tell people like when they would say you got a problem or you need to quit, I'd be like, if you knew how bad my life was, 
you'd understand why I need to take these, right? Like, you'd understand why I need to be high or drunk all the time, right? Like, because addiction is very cunning and it, it takes over the survival part of the brain, like the limbic system. And in active addiction, you feel like you need it in order to survive. So you will justify your use in any way you can, right? But anyways, like, this song was like actually really good, like lyrical, like lyric wise. Um, if you like the actual song, like cool, you do you baby. But anyways, I was really impressed by this when I was listening to the song, I pulled up the lyrics. I'm like, oh man, I need to make a video about this because maybe Billie Eilish is actually getting a decent message out there, right? There's some other songs I wanna look into um, and kind of break those down as well. But anyways, if you're watching this, if you are struggling with a Xanax addiction or you know someone who is, like I mentioned detox, it can be very dangerous. Please, please, please go get professional help. Find a detox center to go and come down off of them in a safe way because like I said, there can be seizures and other issues, so make sure that you get help, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing, and if you would like to become a patron, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.